Welcome Raiders to another Raid Shadow Legends video and in this one I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on the two new champions uh, Lady of Areth, is it Ireth or Ireth? Um, and Valkanen, which is going to be uh, Battle of Khazar's episode 9 of his lore story So let's look at her first She's a legendary spirit support champion for the Sylvan Watchers also known as the New Russian Elves Um... <laughs> So her first her first um skill is going to be Fey Bolt, right? She'll attack one enemy, instantly activate uh one random continuous heal buff on all allies with less than 85% HP. That is really cool because this synergizes not only with her own kit, right? Cuz 15% continuous heals, right? So if you take a, if you're at 100% health, you take 15 or more. Cool. It's gonna work, right? Also, this synergizes with other champions in her faction as well, including Oella. So that is really nice. Um, uh, there's two books there, but you're probably never gonna book that. And let's be honest, she doesn't have multi hits, so why would you even build this champion for damage? It's kind of weird. But um, yeah, the A2 is gonna be Mistwood Healing. It is a four turn cooldown bookable to three. And it says that it removes all debuffs from a target ally then heals them by 40% of their max HP, not hers, Sag. Uh, but this heal can be critical. So basically, you can always heal for 80% if you build 100% on her, which is very interesting. Um, if the target is not fully healed, then she'll place a block damage for two turns. That is huge. Um, and if the target is fully healed, uh, fills their turn meter by 50%. That's pretty nice. I like that a lot. I like that a lot because uh, pretty much by critting, you give them turn meter, and if they if you somehow didn't fully heal them, then they get block damage anyways, which is really really interesting. Um, this is a uh, three books, two for the healing, one for the cooldown. Not bad. Next one's gonna be uh, rhythmic strength. It's a five turn um, cooldown, but it's bookable down to three. So she is a one three three champion. You know we like that. Uh, places a 25% strength in it and a 15% continuous heal buff on all allies for two turns. Um, there are some champions that actually do this, but they're like epics and stuff like that. So it is nice to see a Lego that can actually do it. Um, and you might be like, it's just strengthen. It's just a strengthen buff uh, and continuous heal. Ooh, but here's where it synergizes, right? If you look at the next skill, Aegis of the Forest, which is her, pa her passive... By the way, there's only two books on the third skill, too, so that's not bad. Right there, there's only five books, technically. Uh, her passive places a shield buff equal to 15% of this champion's max HP. Okay, that's pretty cool. On the ally with the lowest HP for two turns at the start of this champion's turn. Now, technically, we tested this out with another champion that has the same, same keyword to Hanarok. So, technically, she should be able to solo. And it works on herself if she's the only one there. But if there's any other champion that has lower HP than her, it's usually going to work on that champion. So giving a champion 15% based on her max HP, that's pretty crazy. That's a decent decent amount of a shield, right? And then she has an aura that increases all battles by 30%. Of course, the train's got to be absurdly loud. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, we have trains that pass by here. So, the three, five, seven books. Seven books is not bad for a legendary. Honestly, it's really low on the low end. We're talking about Necrit low, right? Um, and then the HP in all battles is not bad as well. Overall, what do I think about the kit? Uh, she does something very interesting with the A1. Uh, actually, everything, every single thing that she does is very interesting. She's, ba she's basically a the carry on the A2. That's scalable. I do like that. A3 is really nice. Passive can keep getting huge value over and over. Um, and she's just a good support for the Silver Watchers. Is she in super insane game breaking like a du like a Duchess or anything like that? No, she's not crazy, but she's actually still a decent, a really strong support. Um, let's move on to the next one. Nope, not that one. It's this one. Nope, not that one either. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Anyone who's wondering what that was, well, you're probably gonna you'd have to watch my streams to know what that is. Let's look at Val Cannon. Um, 
basically young version of Al-Badakazar before he gets corrupted by the shadow by Siroth, right? So this is how he was. Um, looks a little bit more defined, but yeah, let's look at this. Let me bring out the mic a little bit. Are you right there? Okay. So um, the first skill is going to be, let's look at Dread Scythe. Right, so he is a void. He is a void legendary um, through the undead faction. Right, attack champion based. So let's look at the first skill, Dread Scythe. Attacks one enemy. This this attack ignores shield buffs. Nice. Uh, also has a sixty percent chance of increasing the duration of all debuffs on the target by one turn. <laughs> free free value. That's bookable to eighty percent. That's nice. Also has a hundred percent chance fully booked. To apply, it's 80% of applying a deep buff spread effect, taking two random debuffs from the target and placing them on all enemies under hex. That's huge because usually you have that on like an A2 or A3. Some people can do an A1, but there's very high conditions. Hex is pretty becoming a little bit normal nowadays, and he actually puts hex on his A2, so it synergizes. His hate, his A2 is hex of blades, attacks on enemies. Uh, it's a four turn cooldown, bookable down to three. Uh, this attack deals single target damage single target damage to each target individually rather than AoE. Okay, okay, so he's it's an AoE, but it's not technically an AoE. It's basically blow hits each target one by one instead of just pure AoE. Very interesting. There's uh this will help this champion ignore certain passives like crutches. Uh, Kandrafon, things that reduce AoE damage, probably stalwart gear as well, but this will help probably help out with certain champions like Mariska, because technically Mariska, if you put her in the front, right, when you're AoEing, she should die first, and then the other champion should not be able to come back, but because even though the way she's written, it's not written how it should work, technically if Mariska was at the end all the way in the right if you placed her that's how she should technically revive everybody because everyone dies everyone's dead first she last dies and brings everyone back but unfortunately if you put her in the lead position which i don't know why they gave her a lead aura because if you know she, she's technically supposed to be in the back but cool you put in the lead order it still works it's almost like her passive says wait two seconds if when she dies, she will then revive her body, which doesn't make any sense. But nice that we have a, no, a new champion to counter that. Uh, before attacking, also has an 80% chance of placing a hex. Nice on all enemies for two turns. Will ignore 20% of each target's resistance for each dead ally. Nice. And the damage of the skills increased by 10% for each debuff on each enemy. That's huge. That's pretty nuts, honestly. Um, and there's like uh, five books there as well. So already we have what nine books already. Sheesh. Now let's look at the next skill, which is going to be a uh, death's bargain. This is a big one. Um, target an ally. So this is what five turn cooldown book with a three. So he's technically a one three three champion. Nice. All right. If the target, if the target, if the ally, no wait, if the ally, oh, if the ally is alive. Kills them and unlocks a secret skill, Malice Unleashed. All places a 25% weakened debuff for two turns and True Fear for one turn on all enemies. These debuffs cannot be resisted or blocked. What? Then fills this champion's turn meter by 75%. <laughs> hey, I've been, I've been talking about that skill for a while. I kept telling player we need another champion that can sacrifice champions. There's so many champions that can revive champions, revive on death. AoE revive. There's champions that get, get benefits like Deathless that gets benefit for more champions that are dead right on her A3. But I kept telling player, I was like, man, we eventually need to release a champion that can do different things, different mechanics. There you go. Sucks that it's on a legendary, not on an epic, so that everyone can play around with mechanics like this. We have champions like Gamoron, right? Like Gamoron. Gamoron's A3 was very unique, but not in, I don't think it's enough. It needs to be a little bit more buffed to be something very strong. But hey, we have a new champion that's pretty ridiculous so far. If the ally is dead, oh wow, heals this champion by 50% of the dead mass HP. Uh, if all allies are dead, also unlocks a secret skill mass unleashed, places a shield buff on this champion for two turns. The value of the shield is equal to any surface heal. Wow. 
If this champion's already has a shield buff, the value of the shield's increased by an <laughs> by a surplus shield. Nice. Then feels this champion's turn by 75%. That's pretty crazy. And then, of course, this champion would not... Here's a secret skill. And then there's a passive. And then there's an active. And there's... A <laughs> there's more. <laughs> All right. Malice Unleashed, which is a secret skill, right? Attack one enemy. Before attacking, steals all buffs from the target. <laughs> you can steal Stone Skin. This effect cannot be resi resisted, but Stone Skin does have a 50% chance of always not stealing or stealing. So, 50-50. But hey, a 50% to steal all buffs that cannot be resisted? That's pretty crazy. You gotta make sure you have protection on all those buffs, huh? Protection uh, set. If the target has attack equal or higher than this champion's attack, this attack gains a bonus damage multiplier equals the target's attack. Not, not apl applicable to bosses. So basically, uh, the reason why it's not applicable to bosses is because every boss has higher attack than all of us, right? That's why we was, that's why we always want to decrease attack the bosses unless it's like Fire Knight. Um, but if it's a if it's an enemy nuker, they're not going to have any defense, so you could just blow them up. You just go, oh, you're stronger than me. Cool. I basically one shot you. Uh, if the target's attack is less than this champion's attack, this attack will ignore fifty percent of the target's defense. Cool. You're a support champion. You're a defensive champion. Bro, I just I ignore 50% of your defense, you're dead. So either way, they're dead. This attack will also ignore block damage, unkillable, shield, ally protection buffs, then also places a block revive debuff. In so not only does he block revive the enemy, he also basically ignores everything except strengthen. What? That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, that's that is a nutty, 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 uh, a secret skill, honestly. Um, wow, that's like that's like more to McCab, but not multi hitting, but also steals buffs and can't be resisted. So, wow, that is pretty nice. I like that, I like that a lot. I like that secret skill a lot. Uh, Phantom Bulwark, it is a one turn, so you have to book it up. So, nice. Let's look at the active. Places a shield buff on this champion each time an ally or enemy dies. Okay. So basically, the moment you sacrifice someone with the A3, you instantly get this active. Nice. The valid shield uh, buff is equal to 50% of the dead champion's max HP. This shield cannot be removed, stolen, or transferred. Okay. If this champion is already under a shield buff, the value of the shield is increased by 50% of the dead Dead champion's max HP does not activate when a boss... Okay, that makes sense. Okay, cool. Okay. The passive part is whenever an enemy hits... Hits while they are under a shield... Oh, while this champion's under a shield buff. Uh, Valkanen, right? Places a random debuff on the attack enemy. Fear, true fear, freeze, provoke. Uh, that's okay for one turn. So basically hard CCs for one turn and any other debuffs like decreased defense, block active skills, block passive, they will, they will all be for two turns. Uh, we'll also ignore 20% resistance for each dead ally. That's pretty nice. And cannot place block boss exclusive debuffs, sheeps or smite debuffs. I think we kind of understand that that's fair, right? That'd be kind of insane. Uh, it's kind of, it's a little too random. A little too random. Also, has an aura, as you can see over here. Increases speed in arena battles by 30%. That is pretty huge, honestly. Now, let's check them in-game so we can look at exactly what we were looking for. Uh, we were looking specifically for this skill right here. We can show a little bit more in depth right here. You can actually see here. Look at this. Look at this. There's stun. Freeze, sleep, provoke, heal reduction, poison, block buffs, decrease attack, decrease defense, decrease speed, decrease accuracy, decrease crit rate, decrease crit damage, block out their skills, bombs, weaken hex, leech, HP burn, true fear, plus intensity, block passives, and decrease resist. Player forgot to put the petrification debuff here. It says it's here, but where is it here in the description? People are saying, Jay, it's too long for someone to scroll. I say, no, it needs to be there. It's part of the skill. Even though it shows it there, it needs to still show in the debuffs because people are not that... People don't, you know, not everyone plays raid, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So anyways, um, I think he's nutty. 
I think he's going to be one of the best new champions, just like Taras. He's going to be insane of a champion. Uh, I, I, I can't wait to push him, uh, pull him if I can, but I highly doubt it. What do you guys think about these two new champions? Tell me in the, in the description down below. Also, if you guys didn't know, I, I, I uploaded the Call of the Arbiter episode, episode 9. If you want to win free resources, have a chance to go and watch that video and then comment down below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.